Hey, how's it going? Today I have a bit of a fun, pro fun project here. I finally got this little mini Genesis hub, uh, USB hub from uh, Shirt Punch, I think it was from. Uh, anyway, they're really cool and they fit uh, Raspberry Pi inside. A lot of the guys like to do it, so I decided to give it a shot and uh, I wanted to post a video so everyone could see how it's done, that it's possible, and all that fun stuff. So what I've got here is I've got the hub, I've got a Pi 2, which doesn't work. The USB or the SD card reader on it is damaged. Uh, it stopped working so then I kind of bent it to try and get better contact and that didn't work. So that's, it's garbage. So I use it for mock-ups so that if I mess it up or whatever, it's no big deal. Uh, and then I also have this, this is a Pi 3B. Uh, I just put it in this little makeshift case here that I got. It's just a... A DLT tape case and I just put it in here just so that uh, it was protected for travel and stuff like that and uh, I could still open it up and access it and access the SD card and all that stuff so eventually I'll be putting this one inside the Genesis hub but I wanted to uh, I want to mock up with the one that's already damaged so I don't have to worry about it so we'll put that one off to the side for a bit so the first thing I was, I need to do is disassemble the Genesis hub, and this is uh, a little bit of a, it requires a little bit of patience and uh, a little bit more effort in prying the thing open than I'd like to put into it. Um, I, when I first did it, I thought I was going to break it, but it just turns out that there's some points in there that are glued. Uh, I'm not sure why they decided to screw it and glue it, but they did, so... Okay, so to take this apart, there's just the four screws in the corners. And just make sure you take those four screws completely out, because you're going to have to give it a little more force than you're going to want to here. And you just grab the back, and just you're going to have to pry really hard. Like, mine will come apart easy, because I've already had this one apart. But you just keep pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and eventually it'll pop open. And the reason that it's difficult is these three little tabs here are glued uh, in there. And it doesn't really matter if you break them. It's not going to make any difference in reassembling it. Uh, it. They're just... I don't even know why they're there. They, they're quite unnecessary, but maybe just to help the, uh, support these outer separations of the USB but they're really unnecessary and uh, a pain in the ass, but not that difficult. If you just, you're just gonna have to give it a little more pull than you're, you're probably comfortable with. So there's the Genesis hub open. As you can see, there's, there's nothing in the bottom. There's lots of room in the top. Everything's screwed to the top. The switch and the slider, the volume slider and stuff are non-functional, but you could, could turn them into something if you wanted. Um, so my plan for this is going to be to mount it just like this. Uh, the reason I wanted to do it like that is because I want to uh, retain access to the SD card slot without having to make a hole in the case. So uh, I can open up the case, just the four screws, and then I can access the SD card. Since I'm using a Pi 3, B, um, it has Wi-Fi and it has Bluetooth, so realistically, I shouldn't have to access the SD card unless the image corrupts or something like that, because it will, um, it, it, I'll be able to use different methods like FTP and SSH and stuff like that in order to run commands on it and stuff, so I really should not never actually have to access the SD card, uh, so I, I don't think that's really going to be an issue. So the first thing I did was, uh, I've already kind of pre-marked it. You can't see because it's black on black. I did that on purpose so that it wouldn't be dis wouldn't be obvious if I ended up uh, not using the marks or something like that. But basically I just lined it up exactly where I wanted it. And I marked on the outside here where I'm going to cut for these ports. And but to do that I just kind of lined it up here like this. And... Uh, 
right at the height that I wanted it and just drew drew rough lines. It doesn't need to be perfect. And to cut that out, I think I'm going to use, I have a soldering iron and it's got a, a knife attachment on it. I think I'm going to use that. It should give me the best result as long as you have a steady hand uh, for the ports. And for the headphone one, I'm going to use a drill because it's perfectly round and all that. So I've got it marked and I'll put the case back together and then I'll just drill that out first. And then I'll come back and line up the other ports uh, according to that because those I can kind of adjust as I go. So uh, let's put the case back together and drill a hole for the headphone jack. Okay, so I've got my digital caliper here and uh, I was just going to measure to see what size of hole I need to do. So this is actually one of my favorite tools. I use it for absolutely everything, all of my different projects that I do. So the headphone jack is six mil on the outside. So I'll probably, I'll use a small bit for a pilot and then uh, I'll, I'll drill maybe like 6.1 mil or something like that. I'll see what kind of drill bits I have. Not bad, first drill bit I picked is 5.9. I can just hog it out a little bit with this drill bit, so I, I think that'll work all right. So I'm going to find a small drill bit to drill a pilot hole with. Actually, scratch that. I'm going to use my soldering iron. I uh, just have a really fine tip on there right now, and I'm just going to use that to do my pilot hole. Just It's a lot easier to get accurate and than with a, uh, a small drill bit. And it just goes through like nothing. So there's my pilot hole. And here's my drill. And we'll just drill that out. It's nice and slow. Try and hold the two pieces together so they don't buckle too much. Don't put any pressure on it. Just let the, build, the drill bit do the work. Remember, don't go too deep because uh, the USB hub is still in there. And you don't want to take any chances of damaging that. All right, so you can see that hole's there. I can test fit, and it's a perfect fit for the headphone jack. I don't really need the headphone jack, but I'm gonna. I don't want to remove it from the board or anything like that. I don't want to take any chances damaging my Pi 3, so I'm just gonna leave it on there, and uh, it'll be there. It, it's it's just in the way of having the board flush to the back of the case so that I can access the other ports. So that's the only reason I'm even making provisions for that. Okay, so open the case back up here. <clears throat> and then we'll line this up again with the headphone jack right where it's going to be and just confirm our markings from before and they're a little bit off so I'm going to redraw them uh, but for the most part they're not too bad now for the depth on this I think that looks actually really good because it's lined up with the other board uh, I might make some standoffs to put on the front too holes just hold it in place nicely uh, so the the USB the power I don't think I'm gonna have to cut the top case at all uh, it'll just be the HDMI and then the power I'll have to cut a notch in the, the bottom case because it kind of sits like right at the edge there I might have to put a little tiny bit there uh, so the USB or the HDMI you can see it's kind of only exposed where it steps there a little bit like right in in this corner is where it's where it was still showing there so I'll just take a measurement of from that step to the top and we got about 4.2 mil and then I can mark that with my caliper here right on there so I know exactly where I need to cut for the HDMI port 
So I have my soldering iron. I'm just going to switch it over to my cutting blade uh, for the plastic melting. You'll probably want to have some sort of respiratory protection for this since it's melting plastic and not good for you. Actually, I think I might just leave this, this little fine bit on here because that knife blade is, is really thick. I don't think I can do very precise, very precise stuff with it, so I'm just going to leave this one on here and just give it a second heat up here. Okay, so that's the HDMI hole there. It's just connected a little bit with some melted plastic. And then just let the plastic cool a little bit. <clears throat> I'll grab a knife and just clean that up. That melted stuff on the outside. Might uh, grab my Dremel with a sanding disc and just clean this up a bit. Let's see. Get a little bit of a test fit. Yeah, I'll have to go a little bit higher on that, but that's okay. That it's better better not cut enough than too much. I can go now with my Dremel and clean it up a little bit, or my soldering iron even again, and just kind of slowly increase the size of the opening here. You can always take material off, but putting it back on is not going to be easy. Alright, so there you go. The test fit looks good now. Where are we here? There. Looks good now. I mean, it's, it's a little bit ugly, but you're not really going to see it anyway. Not often. Uh, I might do something to clean it up, just hit it with the Dremel or something later, but it's not too, too bad. So now I have, let's just take a look at the micro USB, and you can see I have it marked there. I don't know if you can really see the markings in the video. You should be able to a little bit, um, but see, it's, it's just below there, so uh, I'm not going to bother touching the top part of the case with that. Uh, I'll just cut the bottom part. So I'll just... And I also have to cut the bottom part a little bit for the HDMI, so I'll measure how much I need for the HDMI on the bottom of the case. That's two mil. And how much I need for the micro USB power. That's almost three mil. And then I'll put the case back together. just a little bit off there on the especially on the micro USB that the HDMI will will be fine right there it's just the micro USB I just need a little bit more on the inside the three holes and the three pieces just sit in there quite nicely. So as you can see there's the three ports and the thing is fully reassembled. No problem. Uh, it fits no problem. Cord. 
The only reason that's not closed is because the cord was coming out the wrong place. This cord I'm gonna t I'm gonna cut off and solder to the board. Um, that's one thing I am comfortable with doing with the boards, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, a lot of people, what they'll do is they will uh, leave this cord in there and just coil it up inside and not cut it or modify it in any way and then just plug the USB right into the USB slot here. Uh, this USB port's a little bit damaged as well. Like I said, this is my mock-up board. So I plug it into the USB port there and then just trim this tail a little bit like that, it's just rubber, it's super easy to do. It's not an issue at all to cut that loose. And then, so they'll just trim that and then leave that all together in there. But I wanted to potentially add switches or whatever onto the volume slider and the, the power button power slider. So uh, I want to have it as clean and, and uh, finished as possible really. So uh, I'm gonna cut the cord and just solder it onto these little USB pins here. Uh, it's, it's super easy. Um, they're not that bad of a spot and uh, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Uh, but of course it's going to be on the Pi 3 board, not on this board. This is just my test board. But everything looks good as far as fit and the case modifications go. Uh, the only other thing, like I said, I may do is either build, just make a standoff with a like a, a three mil uh, standoff. I have some of these brass standoffs like this for other projects. And so I could just use one of those and hot glue it onto the case inside or something like that. Just I, Or I might even just stuff something in here like a piece of foam between these two boards, something like that, just to make sure that the uh, the ports are secure in the back so that when I plug in the HDMI the board doesn't like move around and get dislodged and stuff like that. Uh, it's more of a personal preference. I don't think it's really a necessity once this is crammed in there. The, the ports might go in a little bit but not enough to actually obstruct them from working. So I don't think that's really a concern but it's all personal preference at that point. But I just wanted to show that yeah minimal work, super easy. Uh, doesn't require a lot of specialized tools and you can get this thing in there no problem.